Right. So, hi, Sivert. It's a, it's an hey, honor man. and a pleasure How to have you. How are you doing? Great. It's an honor and a pleasure to really have you nice. on Rock Hard Greece. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, so, after uh, many years, we have a new Madrugada album out. And the obvious question is, what made you create a new studio album uh, after your reunion? It was um, it just felt like a um, natural next step. Like we've been on the road. It's been very inspiring for all of us, you know. Um, and um, and I guess sometime during the uh, autumn of 2019, we started talking about making some new music uh, together again. We wanted the tour to go on because it had been like really... Um, you know, it, it, it had really been a very special experience for, for all of us. It's, it's been a lot more than we expected, really, you know. So we wanted the, the, that to go on for a bit longer. And we didn't want to just move on to doing like the touring the nightly disease or like and then doing grit or, you know, just playing all our old albums. So we thought we had to be a little bit... Um, more relevant you know to uh, yeah. just we wanted to make some new music together really yeah and not be an anniversary band yeah yeah <laughs> um how did the fact that you had been playing live the the material of uh, industrial silence influence you on in the making on the com uh, on the songs that you composed the way that you composed because with every band that uh, i have spoken with uh, that they have toured for an, uh, a specific album, they say that they always have the vibes of that album in their minds while creating new music. Yeah, I said that definitely. That's definitely true about um, about this new album. It's uh, it's very much um, influenced by the fact that we had been living and breathing the sound of industrial silence for like two years. Really, that's we spent all of twenty eighteen preparing for the tour and then we were on the road for all of 2019 so and then we went straight into the studio um like started writing songs and that process went pretty quickly we wanted to have the the energy of the you know we thought we were a great live band at that point we were really doing great shows and we wanted to capture that energy in the studio as well so, uh, so yeah, it's uh, definitely very much inspired by industrial silence, I, I'd say, yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you explain the fact that Madrugada grew a lot bigger uh, after they split up? I, I don't because really have... Your solo career. I, I think that helped, really, you know. I'm, I, I think it helped that I, <clears throat> that I was around and, you know, it, it's, I've done pretty well uh, in the absence of Madrugada. And I, I guess, it, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> I guess that sort of must have reminded people that there was a, also a band called Madrugada that I used to be part of. But uh, Madrugada was always sort of a, a word of mouth thing, you know. Like it wasn't anything like your press. The press would tell you that Madrugada was such a cool band. You got to like them or whatever. It was a band that you sort of had to find out uh, about yourself, you know. As, in that sense, I guess we're kind of like a cult band in a way, you know. Um, so people are kind of have this ownership to our band, you know, because they found out about it or they heard about it from a friend or whatever. So it gives them, um, I, I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know how our band sort of uh, got bigger in our absence, really, because it could just as well, just as well have been the other way around, you know? Yeah, just disappear. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Fade away. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I'm extremely glad. Uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, forgive my 
excuse my, my, my Norwegian, but I saw that I saw uh, lots of videos and some interviews that you did about the Fe, Festera, Festeralen uh, projects. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with all these videos that you have shot in this particular area in Norway, uh, first of all, uh, having watched a few of them, uh, I don't know if you agree, but they seem to, to have been inspired by all these live streaming shows that we have seen during the pandemic. The whole concept reminds me of, of that theme, first of yeah. all. And second, I would like you to tell me about the video clip of uh, Dreams at Midnight, which uh, in, in which you play in front of a house that is set on fire. And I know that it's a real fire. These are real firemen. and. Uh, I would like you to, to tell us a few stories about this project, which is very, very interesting. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> definitely you're right about it being inspired by the whole live <clears throat> streaming thing. And I guess, Jesus, my voice. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't have COVID. Um, <laughs> it's... Uh, it's um I, I, don't, I don't i don't i'm not worried this is just a video we're not going yeah, yeah. it's not face to face uh, <laughs> yeah no um uh um yeah it's definitely a lot of uh i guess a lot of people started thinking during this time that maybe uh having someone actually playing live in a sort of weird setting might be more uh engaging for people than a normal music video because I, like what we do now with music videos is like trying to recreate a video from like the golden era of mtv on like a fraction of that budget you know and it always gets kind of disappointing you know so this is kind of a way to just okay if we do it live then at least it's it's happening you know so uh and we're a live band so, and this guy, uh, Avin Holmbu, who we did this, um, these videos with, he had been doing quite a few of those kind of elaborate um, streaming uh, concerts. So that's where his experience came from, really. So that's what, yeah, it's definitely inspired by that mm -hmm. sort of know-how that people have been getting now during the pandemic. I'm doing that, those sort of things. And the, yeah, the burning house was a rehearsal for the, uh, for the f local firemen. Uh, so they, uh, and it's actually the first video, Nobody Loves You Like I Do, is in the same house before we burnt the house. Um, I've been getting some like negative feedback on that. Like there's something about seeing a burning home, you know which is not a very nice thing to see the people, for people, you know, it's uh, because it's, yeah, it's someone's home, but I, I, mean, imagine, I mean, it was- I imagine it must have been, I, I imagine it must, it must have been very stressful to, oh, to play in front of yeah. a burning house. Yeah, and-, and It was, okay, it was extremely if, if stressful. shooting doesn't happen, yeah it was extremely stressful well. it was yeah and that was the case with many of these things like we had minimal time on each location this was the third song we did on that day and the house was burning you know if we didn't get it right and uh, and the house burns pretty fast really i was surprised now so so uh, like we had to get it right in like three takes so uh so that was that was the time we had to do it and it was pouring down with rain you can't see it in the video but most of the time it was pouring down with rain got rain in the microphone rain all over my guitar you know all over the piano it was horrible you know <laughs> but uh but i think yeah it's and there's something about those videos that they communicate well i think and in case this this thing uh, wasn't right, you had to burn another house. Oh yeah, I, I, we we could have 
maybe managed actually like they were very helpful the fire department and they have a list of houses that they get to burn to rehearse putting out fires you know so um so i wouldn't have been surprised if, the, if the, that could have worked out actually um so uh, your album was recorded in the u.s uh yeah. but at the time the recordings were finished uh there came the lockdown the first lockdown um what happened next and uh lasted so many months yeah i mean we uh, we had most of the like luckily we had all the basic tracks done from uh, from la uh but then you know we had to leave la a couple of days before we were supposed to go actually because of the lockdown back home because we didn't even know at that time if we were going to be allowed back into the country or if there was ever going to be another airplane leaving <laughs> going to norway again so um and then after a while we got together in oslo in may i think and started doing some overdubs and uh, on on these these tracks like there was you know some extra guitars that were going on and some keyboards and everything and it was a very frustrating process of having the producer on a on a big screen on a you know on zoom or whatever you know and it was a nine hour time difference um and everything gets very complicated that way when you're not in the same room and you know very small adjustments to a mix you have to put it all down in an email or a text message and send it whereas if, if you were in the same room you could just turn the turn a knob and and to see if that worked yeah. it was just very frustrating way of of working but um yeah i i, I can't really I, I, it's it's a bit sad we didn't get to do it the way we were supposed to do like we were supposed to just go back to oslo and then uh, go back to la for another 14 days but uh that never happened yeah, I, thankfully the techno technology yeah. is the way it is so it, it's actually possible to do that do that now because because this album would end up in yourselves otherwise and yeah. a lot of bands that that were forced to work this way yeah oh yeah oh yeah uh that does the fact that uh, you are all fathers now influenced you the way you write music and lyrics yeah i, I think there's songs on this that have themes about you know, you know about pa parenthood and you know uh sh having kids and sharing your your like having a wife and being a, in a family you know um it's definitely part of uh, some of these songs not not all of them but, but i mean it's something that you don't really hear too much in rock music because it's uh I, I don't know it's supposed to be a young genre or whatever you know which it really is like most most performers of rock musician rock music are quite you know um are old people now you know so uh but i mean uh yeah i mean if it was going to be honest if it's going to be honest you got to sort of have some of that in there like the real life that you actually live in. and it's it's there on songs like ecstasy and stabat mater and help yourself to me and yeah uh, um, a personal question as uh i like both your uh uh, works with some uh, more metal artists during the last All years right. you worked with uh, satiricon you worked with satiricon for phoenix and with yeah. nergal in his project me and that man 
on the song Coming Home last year in yeah. 2020. Uh, can you tell us more yeah. about these collaborations? How did they happen? Uh, do you enjoy? Uh, how, how, how do you see them now? Yeah, I mean, the, I, I guess the, me working with Satyricon uh, on uh, Phoenix was sort of opened many doors for me, I suppose, with the, just got me, uh, uh, made me uh, available or sort of um, uh, to to people from the metal like black metal community which is uh, sort of a worldwide thing really you know so i get uh, i got sort of visible for those guys they sort of knew about me from from uh, know about me now from uh, from that song which is uh, it's uh, it's kind of cool and it's been way more uh the effect of that has been way more than i've ever thought it would be you know it's And they're really great people, you know, these black metal fans, just like really, really serious about music and, and open-minded about music as well. It's not, it's really not a, a narrow kind of genre kind of uh, thing to, to these people. They're just really all about music and really polite and cool, cool people. So, so that's been great. And, uh, And Nergal, I know, has been a Madrugada fan since our first album. He he actually he told me he played at a place called John D in Oslo when we played Rockefeller, which is a place upstairs from, and this is like 98 or 99. And he went up there and saw our um, sound check and became a fan of our band mm -hmm. like 20, over 20 years ago. He's a great guy. I met him a couple of times now, and he came to see our show in, in Berlin. Also very sort of open-minded about music, you know, obviously with this sort of thing, like he does Behemoth, which is one thing, and and he does this uh, Me and That Man thing, is, which is more kind of a blues, rock, gothic kind of, uh, what, whatever you want to call it, which is about, probably just about, all kinds of other genres, you know, and collaborating yeah. with people. So. Yeah. Um, you personally and Madrugada have a very special bond with Greece. And this uh, doesn't only have to do with uh, the, the live album, uh, your solo live album, Live at Acropolis. I have counted that you have played 16 times in Greece with Madrugada and 24 times as a solo artist. This means that you have been to Greece at least 40 times. You have played 40 shows in Greece. Oh my God. Uh, I had no idea do you think? that much. Yeah, that's 40. Yeah, it's, it, it's 40. It's 40. Yeah. Wow. I spent a few time hunting them, a few, <laughs> uh, but, but it's 40. Which do you think is the element that and Madrugada so beloved in our country? Which is, which is uh, not the normal, uh, you know, uh, fame that Madrugada has, the no. average. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know what it is because it's been like that In a way, it's been like that from the beginning. Like uh, Greece was always one level up from all the other places. When we got there in the uh, like late summer 2000, on the first Madrugada tour, it was already, um, you know, the audience was already there. You know, and in the, all the other countries, we had to go there and play for just a handful of people, and then go back and just build it. But. Um, So I don't really know, I don't really have a good explanation for it, really. But um, I guess I've noticed that um, rock music is a thing, is still in, in, in Greece. And, uh, huh? Yeah. <laughs> It's my wife. <laughs> um, no, this sort of, uh, like, there's a love for, like, this sort of dark, atmospheric uh 
acts like you know um, uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, Big and Grease, um, uh, the Pesh Mold, that sort of kind of vibe, which I think we, we have a bit of that as well. So uh, I, I don't really know, but I mean, we always, but we also uh, gave something back. Like we, we always made sure to come to Greece, like on every tour and like many times on every tour. And I guess that's sort of a thing as well, I suppose, just prioritizing, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and in a few months time, you uh, are playing in uh, Cali Marmaro, the Panathinaiko uh, stadium. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, as I live very close to that place, I know exactly what happens with the shows. And during the last uh, years, uh, if I remember well from uh, uh, foreign bands only, the Scorpions have played there because it's a huge yeah. state. Uh, so the expectations are very high. Uh, what should we expect from uh, Madrugada in that show, which, uh, which uh, is... Uh, uh, going to be done hopefully in September. Um, I, I, it's going to be a very very special night uh, I'm, I'm because we it's been a dream for us. Uh, like we don't necessarily want to be like the biggest band in the world, but we really wanted to play a band uh, one show <laughs> on that sort of on that sort of level, and it's just perfect that it's happening in Athens with we we love the crowd there you know just people come to a concert and they know that they you know they just know what they got to do to make it a special night and and we're um yeah it's going to be a one-off uh, once in a lifetime experience for all of us I think <laughs> just to yeah to say it uh, yeah I don't, I don't know what, what else to say. Like, it's going to be the biggest show we've done mm -hmm. ever. And we're going to throw everything we have at it. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, returning to the album, uh, which song of the album do you think is the most representative of uh, what Madrugada is in 2022? Huh. That's uh, that's a tricky question. <clears throat> it's, really it's, it's a question. It's a question that might lead to the next Madrugada uh, album. The the, uh, the the direction that Madrugada will take in the next album. Oh, but I'm no I'm no idea about that. Like it's uh, as I said, it sort of comes from touring uh, Industrial Silence. Like it's it's sort of and we weren't really looking forward much we weren't really just wanted to to get some great songs like and get the mood right on these songs like there's one song that we all feel very much a song called help yourself to me we all enjoy playing it a lot and it's just uh just quickly becoming a, a real favorite with all of us if that really says anything about who we are in 2022 I, i'm not really sure i don't i don't really know i don't i don't know how to answer that question really yeah honestly okay. <laughs>